Hello and a very good evening. You're watching the news tonight on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Here are the headlines. 124 MPs and 17 mayors of Indian origin from 23 nations converge in New Delhi for a conference government hosting these eminent Indians to brainstorm on how they can help in strengthening India's ties with their countries of residence. Prime Minister commends India's security apparatus for its work in securing the country, applauds officers at the valedictory ceremony of the conference of DGPs and IGs for their leadership, despite having to operate in an environment of negativity. Ninety delegates from the centre and 19 states attend the All India WIPSIS conference in Udaipur, Government says purpose of the conference is to strengthen parliamentary democracy and its institutions. Supreme Court to reconsider Section 377, which criminalizes homosexuality, refers matter to a larger bench saying the issue arising out of Section 377 needs to be debated. And India loses to South Africa in the first test in Cape Town by 72 runs, set a target of 208. The visitors are bundled out for 135 runs. Vernon Philander takes six wickets for the host team. Well, in a bid to tap the unique reservoir of Indians living abroad, the government is hosting parliamentarians and mayors of Indian origin at a conference in New Delhi on Tuesday. In the first-of-its-kind initiative, 124 MPs and 17 mayors from 23 countries will participate in a brainstorming meet. These influential people of Indian origin will share their experiences and chalk out a long-term understanding of engagement with their ancestral land. India has the second largest diaspora in the world and some of the members of this community who occupy eminent positions in public life in their respective countries will be attending a conference in Delhi on Tuesday. The focus will be on how the India Connect can help in contributing to strengthen India's relationship with their countries. See how this diaspora, diasporic family could actually contribute to furthering the relationship you know, with those countries and facilitate people-to-people -people contact, which has been emphasized again and again by both Honorable Prime Minister as well as Honorable External Affairs Minister. So this is the first time such a conference is being held. Uh, it's also to create awareness amongst ourselves as to how big is the Indian, extended Indian family, and to give them an opportunity to connect uh, with India firsthand. Vice President M. Venkaiya Naidu, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj will be present at the conference. Congress leader Shashi Tharoor, who is the chairman of the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Ministry of External Affairs, will also take part in the deliberations. Again, indirectly gets reflected in economic links, cultural links, people-to-people -people, uh, links. And while these are not always quantifiable uh, you know, benefits, they are certainly contributing if today you see that India's uh, image outside is fairly, you know, uh, good or fairly uh, appreciated, a major role has also been played by the diaspora. In 2003, former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee's government started the first Pravasi Bharatiya Divas event. Since then, it has played a significant role in fostering an emotional connect with the Indian diaspora. It'll also perhaps create an awareness about how large <coughs> the extended India family, Indian family is actually is, in the sense that more than 30 countries have people in the people sitting in the parliament of Indian descent. So in a sense, India has accomplished uh, the theme, Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, or the whole planet is our family, in the true sense of the term. We have no doubt that the conference will see us certain upgradation of our relationship 
with these countries from where these members are uh, coming. To come to India, sometimes they think, oh, it's so far away, it's so difficult to travel in India, and nobody knows. For example, here in Delhi, how you renovate it, how, nobody knows, I doesn't knew that you have a metro. So this is a part of, I, I am thinking we have to share more because the Swiss people, they don't know so much about India. Prime Minister Narendra Modi always makes it a point to reach out to the Indian diaspora abroad. Officials say this not only makes Indians abroad feel respected, but also inspires them to promote India within their countries of residence. Most of the parliamentarians are coming for the first time to India and when they will go back, they will share their Indian experience among their peers all over the world and also to their countrymen. And you know, word of the mouth is much more effective sometimes than big books. Akhile Suman for Raj Sabha Television with camera person Vijay Kumar in Delhi. Another big news now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday addressed the valedictory ceremony at the annual conference of DGPs and IGPs at the BSF Academy in Tekanpur, Madhya Pradesh. In his speech, the Prime Minister recalled how the nature and scope of the conference have changed since 2014, appreciating the officers who have been instrumental in facilitating this change. He said the conference has now become more relevant in the context of challenges and responsibilities facing the country. He also commended the country's security apparatus for the work they are doing in securing the country. Prime Minister also mentioned the emerging global consensus towards greater information sharing on illicit financial dealings, saying India had a key role to play in achieving this. He also asserted that cyber security issues should be dealt with immediately and should receive the highest priority. In this context, he particularly mentioned the importance of social media. Home Minister Rajnath Singh, Ministers of State for Home, uh, Hans Raj Ahir and Kiran Rijiju were also present at the event. Well, Parliamentary Affairs Minister Anand Kumar inaugurated the 18th All India Whips Conference in Udaipur on Monday. Rajasthan Chief Minister Vasundra Raje presided over the inaugural session of the two-day conference being attended by around 90 delegates from 19 states and the centre. Speaking at the 18th All India Whips Conference in Udaipur on Monday, Parliamentary Affairs Minister Anand Kumar stressed on the role and responsibilities of a whip. He said the duty of a whip is not only to monitor the members of his or her respective party in the legislature, but also to moderate and motivate them. He compared the whips conference to twin rainbows, rainbow of various political parties and rainbow of various states, and stated that parliamentary democracy is the best form of democracy. He added that the purpose of the conference was to strengthen parliamentary democracy, its institutions and ultimately serve the people at large. <laughs> विप्स का ये इम्पोर्टेंट रोल इसको अंडरस्टेमेंट किया गया यानी हम जो विप्स है हम कई बार शिकार हो जाते हैं पार्टी भी हमको आदेश देती रहती है जो अध्यक्षा करते हैं विधानसभा हो विधान परिषद हो लोकसभा हो राज्यसभा हो चेयर और चेयर भी हमको निर्देश देता है दे, देते रहते हैं और उसके साथ जो मेंबर्स हैं वो भी हमारे बारे में कई बार शिकायत करते रहते हैं Ministers of State for Parliamentary Affairs Vijay Goel and Arjun Ram Meghwal also addressed the conference Rules and Procedures की बुक है उसमें भी आपने देखा होगा कि रूल प्रोसीजर बुक में भी जो लैंग्वेज इस्तेमाल करते हैं वो वो लैंग्वेज है जो एडवोकेट्स वकील ज्यादा अच्छी तरह जान सकते हैं उसको भी सिंपलीफाई कर देना चाहिए और आप देखेंगे सिंपलीफाई करके वो बहुत अच्छी बुक बन जाएगी ऐसे ही आपने देखा होगा कि हम 20 20 क्वेश्चंस लगाते हैं 15 से 20 क्वेश्चन लगाते हैं जबकि हमको पता है क्वेश्चन सिर्फ पांच छह आते हैं वेंकैया नायडू में उनको छोड़ दीजिए उन्होंने एक दिन में पंद्रह क्वेश्चन ले लिए नहीं तो यूजली यूजली पांच छह क्वेश्चन आते हैं तो क्यों ना हम इस सबको बदलेंगे इसकी बहुत जरूरत है Rajasthan Chief Minister Vasundhara Raje, who was also present at the conference, said the debates held in the legislature should be cordial and graceful. Being held in Udaipur, the two-day conference is hosting around 90 delegates representing the centre and 19 states. It gives a platform to whips of various political parties to exchange their views and experiences and discuss the challenges they face in discharge of their parliamentary duties. 
The purpose is also to evolve norms for efficient working of parliamentary machinery. Awep is the member of a political party tasked with enforcing the organization's discipline on its members in the legislature. Awep is the member of a political party tasked with enforcing the organization's discipline on its members in the legislature. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the Supreme Court will revisit its earlier verdict on Section 377 of the Indian Penal Code, which criminalized homosexuality. The Apex Court has referred to a larger bench, the fresh plea, seeking to declare Section 377 unconstitutional. Gay rights activists across the country are celebrating the Supreme Court ruling. The Supreme Court on Monday said it will reconsider Section 377 of the Indian Penal Code, which criminalizes homosexuality. The matter will now be referred to a larger bench that will re-examine the constitutional validity of Section 377. A bench comprising Chief Justice Deepak Mishra said the issue arising of Section 377 requires to be debated. The bench was hearing a plea seeking to declare Section 377 unconstitutional. Uh, our uh, human rights ki, jo ulangan hui hai, uh, uske baare mein fir se ek aur baar sochna sabse badi baat hai. And uh, I'm really very hopeful ke ab ja ke kuch acha decision on nirnay lengi Bharat Sarkar. Uh, High Court had given a perfectly correct judgment in this case, holding that this is unconstitutional. Unfortunately, the Supreme Court overturned that judgment. Now with the right to privacy judgment having come in, in which they have said that uh, this also is part of the right to privacy, which is a fundamental right, it is uh, uh, perfectly correct and natural for the Supreme Court to say that this judgment needs to be reviewed and revisited. The court has also issued a notice to the center seeking its response on a writ petition filed by five members of the LGBT community who stated that they live in fear of police because of their natural sexual preferences. It further added that the determination of order of nature is not a constant phenomenon. Societal morality also changes from age to age. Law copes with life and accordingly change takes place. It would be really unconstitutional to punish a man for his sexual preferences. He's born with that. He has certain orientation. You can't make the crime and send it to jail under 377. The Apex Court in 2014 had set aside the 2009 Delhi High Court judgment, decriminalizing homosexuality and termed the provision constitutional. The controversial Section 377 bans sexual activity that is against the order of nature. Those convicted under Section 377 of IPC face a fine and a maximum 10-year jail sentence. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha Television. Well, the first phase of the National Optic Fibre Network Program or Bharat Net project is ready. Telecom Minister Manoj Sinha said that the platform that uses only made in India equipment will be a great utility tool for first time e governance service seekers. The second phase uh, will provide broadband connections to 2.5 lakh gram panchayats by the end of March 2019. The first phase of BharatNet has achieved its target of providing broadband services to 1 lakh gram panchayats, covering 3 lakh villages. This marks a 10% increase in internet usage in the country and is expected to lead to a 3.3% increase in GDP. All equipment under phase 1 of the project are indigenous and customized to work in rural environment where dust is a major factor. The biggest telecom सेक्टर की ये पहली परियोजना है जिसमें एक पैसे का विदेशी सामान नहीं लगा है सब कुछ भारत में बना है और भारत की तकनीक से ही ये परियोजना पूरी गई की गई कंटेंट ऑन द नेटवर्क दैट हैज अ डेटा स्पीड ऑफ अप टू 1 जीबीपीएस इज टू बी डेवलप्ड बाय टेलीकॉम ऑपरेटर्स इन कीपिंग विद द गवर्नमेंट्स एम टू प्रोवाइड अफोर्डेबल डिजिटल सर्विसेज इन रूरल एरियाज टैरिफ्स ऑफ द भारत नेट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर हैव बीन रिड्यूस्ड by 75% from earlier notified tariffs. The Memorandum of Understanding for the Phase 2 rollout has already been signed with more than 20 states. Once complete, BharatNet is expected to be the world's largest rural optical fiber network. 
The government has already launched phase two of the Bharat Net project that aims to provide broadband services to all gram panchayats by 2019. Once completed, it is expected that the Bharat Net project will add 4.5 lakh crore rupees to India's GDP. Reporting from Delhi, with camera person Saroj, I'm Kriti Mishra for Radha Sabha Television. Other news now, Amrindra Sharan, a senior lawyer appointed as amicus curiae by the Supreme Court, has said that there is no need to reopen the Mahatma Gandhi assassination case. On Monday, Sharan mentioned the matter before a bench headed by Justice S.A. Bobde. He informed the court that his report has concluded there is no necessity to reinvestigate the assassination after six decades. The bench said it will take up the matter on January 12th when it will examine a PIL that has sought a reinvestigation into the assassination on the ground that evidence which might point at involvement of a foreign agency had been overlooked. Sharan told the apex court that the bullets which pierced Gandhi's body, the pistol from which it was fired, the assailant who fired the bullets and uh, the conspiracy and ideology which led to the assassination have all been duly identified. No material has come to light to throw any doubt. It further told the court that uh, there is no evidence to prove that the Mahatma was killed by a mysterious person other than Nathuram Godse. Some news uh, on the economy now. Markets ended at record closing highs for a second straight session on Monday as uh, investors remained optimistic over corporate results. The broader NSE Nifty closed 0.61% higher at 10,623.60, while the benchmark BSE Sensex finished 0.58% up at 34,352.79. Gains in key IT, capital goods, healthcare and metal stocks helped both key indices to scale new peaks. The 30-share Sensex surpassed its previous high of 34,188.85. Well, here's a look now at some other news from across the country in our segment Nationwide. A major fire has gutted the principal's office and an adjacent record room of the state-run BRD hospital in Gorakhpur. No loss of life has been reported, but the fire destroyed important documents in the record room. Police said a short circuit may be the cause of the fire. However, a committee has been constituted to probe the reasons behind the fire. Six fire tenders took nearly an hour to bring the blaze under control. Baba Raghav Das Medical College was in the news last year after scores of infants died at the facility. Five employees of a Barkham restaurant were charged to death in a major fire which broke out at the Kumbara Sang Sangha building in Bengaluru. The incident occurred at 2.30 in the morning at the Kailash Bar and Restaurant when the employees were asleep. Two fire tenders and one fire rescue vehicle attended. Fire. The cause of the fire is being investigated. A Sessions court in Guru Gram has rejected the bail plea of the 16-year-old accused of killing 7-year-old Pradyuman Thakur at the Ryan International School. Additional Sessions judge Jasveer Singh Kundu declined relief to the accused and imposed a cost of 21,000 rupees for wasting the court's time in baseless litigation and directed the father of the accused to deposit the amount. Amid a boycott by opposition parties led by the DMK, Tamil Nadu Governor Banwari Lal Purohit made his uh, made an address to the State Assembly on Saturday. He has urged the centre to sanction over 4,800 crore rupees towards Cyclone Oki rehabilitation work. Thanking Prime Minister Narendra Modi for visiting Cyclone hit Kanyakumari, he said that the centre should ask its team, which visited Tamil Nadu, to expeditiously submit its report. But a fire broke out on the third floor of the Sessions Court building in Mumbai on Monday morning. There are no reports of any casualty or injury. However, some official records were gutted in the blaze. The police and fire brigade officials are yet to ascertain the cause of the blaze. This is the fifth fire incident in the city in the last three weeks.
Well, moving on to news from China now, where search and rescue efforts continue for the missing crew members of two vessels which collided off the East Coast on Saturday evening. According to China's Transport Ministry, the collision took place between a Panama-registered oil tanker and a Hong Kong-registered bulk freighter about 160 sea miles east of the Yangtze River's estuary. 32 crew members, including 30 Iranians and two Bangladeshis, are missing. All missing crew members were from the oil tanker which caught fire after the collision occurred. Rescuers are currently trying to put out the fire which has engulfed the vessel. Crew members on the bulk freight freighter, who are all Chinese uh, nationals, were rescued. Chinese maritime authorities have dispatched eight vessels for the search and rescue operation. One body was recovered by rescue teams from the scene of the blaze on the Iranian oil tanker on Monday. Uh, 中国政府对发生这起海南事故高度重视 French President Emmanuel Macron on Monday said that China and Europe should work together on Beijing's Belt and Road Initiative, adding that the Silk Road project cannot be one way. Macron began his first state visit to China with a stop in Xi'an, an eastern departure point of the ancient Silk Road, hoping to relaunch EU-China relations. Israel restored a complete electricity supply to the Hamas-dominated Gaza Strip on Monday following a request last week by the Palestinians who said that they will resume payments. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas had withdrawn his guarantee to pay Israel for par in April last year, leaving Gaza's 2 million residents with only 3 to 4 hours of electricity a day as supplies were cut by about half. The move was part of a bid to press Hamas to loosen its hold over the enclave a decade after the Islamist movement seized the territory from forces loyal to him. The Syrian army has reclaimed a military site on the outskirts of Damascus from rebel forces, according to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. Government troops managed to open a road on Sunday to the Military Vehicles Administration base in the city of Arasta, freeing over 200 troops trapped inside the compound. Well, shifting focus to some sports news now, where India lost the first test against South Africa by 72 runs at Newlands Cape Town. Chasing a target of 208 runs, India were all out for just 135 in the second innings. Vernon Philander took six wickets, while Mone Mokkal and Kagiso Rabada took two wickets each as South Africa took a 1-0 lead in the three-match test series. Ravichandran Ashwin was the top scorer from the Indian side with 37 runs, while there was little contribution from the rest of the team. Earlier, South Africa were all out for 130 runs in their second innings, setting India a target of 208 runs to win. De Villiers fought a lone battle and looked good before losing his wicket. He was the last man to be dismissed as the South Africans were bowled out for 130. Jaspreet Bumrah and Mohamed Shami were the pick of the bowlers from the Indian side as both took three wickets each. How far has it gone? Not far enough. Well, here are some more updates from the world of sports in Sports Beat. In squash, India's Neil Joshi lost to England's Samuel Todd in the final of the British Junior Open squash in Birmingham. Todd defeated Neil 8 11, 16 14, 11 0, 14 12 in the title clash of the boys under 15 category. Australia beat England by an innings and 123 runs after dismissing England for just 180 runs on the final day of the fifth test to clinch the Ashes series 4-0. English captain Joe Root top scored for his side with 58 runs before getting retired hurt. 
Australia's bowling attack dismissed England's last four batsmen for just 36 runs after lunch. Pat Cummins was the pick of the bowlers as he took four wickets while Nathan Lyon took three. Two times champion Victoria Azarenka withdrew from this month's Australian Open as she continues a legal battle over the custody of her son. According to the organisers, Belarusian Azarenka was granted a wild card for the season opening Grand Slam but withdrew. Australia's Nick Kyrgios beat American Ryan Harrison 6-4, 6-2 in the Brisbane International Final to clinch his maiden tour title on home soil. Kyrgios made a slow start due to a knee injury and was forced to save five break points. Kyrgios became the second Australian to lift the trophy in the tournament's 10-year history after Leighton Hewitt in 2014. Lionel Messi marked his 400th appearance in La Liga with uh, the opening goal in Barcelona's 3-0 win over Levante at the Nou Camp. Messi scored the opener in the 12th minute to give Barca a 1-0 lead over Levante. Luis Suarez then scored the second goal for Barca in the 38th minute to make it 2-0, while Paulinho scored uh, the third goal in extra time to seal the victory. Well, that's it on this newscast. Good night. Thank you.